the process of research from clinical problem to change in practice is long. And the development of the idea, question formulation, and study design, all of these initial steps give you clues to what could be in the title of your paper. <clears throat> so let's uh, look at what is the research question. Uh, you can see question formulation is the second step after the first idea comes forward. Because if you cannot formulate a question in a scientific manner, you cannot proceed with a study. So here you see an image. The idea comes in my mind, is the driver a man or a woman? And I want to convert this into a scientific question. I will use these headings. The participants are drivers of this BMW. The competitors are other drivers. The test is the way they fill petrol in the car. And to check the gender, well, I could use a blood sample to check chromosomes, but I could also do psychological tests or examine the attire or hair style. With this question and a particular study design, I can in fact now conduct a research project and answer my question. So this process of framing the question in a manner that can be subjected to a scientific study is the first step. We frequently hear the term cohort and case control study. Case control study is a very confusing term. In a cohort study, basically, we take people, we follow them up, we measure their exposure to something, whether they are smoking or not smoking, follow them up to see whether they develop cancer or they do not develop cancer. And then with that information, we can determine whether cancer is related to experience of or exposure to smoking. This study moves forward in time in follow-up of patients and is called a cohort study. Case control study starts with the outcome, whether you have cancer are the cases, then you collect con healthy controls who do not have cancer and you ask both of them Maybe with a questionnaire, how much did you smoke in the last 10 years or 20 years? And here you can see that the direction of time travel is backwards. And this study where the starting point is the determination of the outcome. And we go back in time to see exposure before we can determine the effect. This type of study is a case control study. Also note that the term control is used inside a cohort study, but control exposure does not make the cohort study a case control study. It is the control with respect to outcome that makes a case control study a case control study. So if we ask the question in coronavirus pandemic, do people exposed have a risk of lymphoproliferative disorder? Uh, the exposure is test PCR test for corona positive or negative. The outcome is a disorder confirmed by laboratory tests like histology and the design could be cohort or case control. Make sense? We can identify people with lymphoproliferative disorder. We can identify a healthy control group. For each one of them, we can go back in time and see if they were exposed to coronavirus by presence or absence of a positive PCR test result. Make sense? This information from the question concerning participants, exposure, outcome, and design <clears throat> can be used to construct the title of your paper. So I show you a title about the moon landing. 
many years of work, billions of dollars of expenditure, engagement of tens of thousands of people and hundreds of companies, all of this summarized in just three words. Just three words on the moon. Where are your keywords that should be in your title of your paper? Well, first of all, the title should not be too long. And it should use the keywords for inclusion in your title are the keywords from your question. So I show you a title of one of my papers. Here you can see the study design is in the title. Here you can see the intervention is in the title outcome, maybe not. Another paper study design is in the title intervention is in the title outcome is also in the title another paper study design is there intervention is there outcome is there so you want to grab the attention of the reader and the and the editor and the peer reviewer by using the words that are your keywords for your research question When do people write the abstract? Normally they write it just before online submission. I suggest that this can be written when writing the protocol, registration of the study, or at the first step of writing the manuscript. Don't wait until just your submission. The abstract has these subheadings. The abstract should be structured, it should be standalone, it should avoid abbreviation, should follow the instructions of the journal. So the information concerning your question goes inside the objectives. This information is then repeated in the last paragraph of the introduction with the information concerning study design. <clears throat> so you can now see how important it is to frame the question correctly because this information will be read in the title, it will be read in the abstract, and it will be read in the first page of the main text when the reader is coming to the end of the introduction. <clears throat> Here is an abstract submitted from one of my previous papers. It looks like it's following the structure but actually, when it is accepted and edited, you can already see that there are so many changes in it. So try not to write the abstract as the last thing before submission. Try to write it the first thing. <clears throat> so you can edit it as many times as possible before, before actual submission. <clears throat> Here are some guidelines on how to write manuscripts and on a website called Equator. Each type of study, randomized trial, observational study, systematic review, qualitative studies as well, all have instructions or checklists on what should be reported. So use these checklists. Even submit the checklist with your manuscript as an appendix. That will be appreciated by the editor and peer reviewer. And these checklists tend to be something of this kind. They ask you to do this in the title. And when you've done this, you just report the page number of the manuscript over here. The structured summary, page number. Rationale, have you given it? Give the page number. So with by reporting the page number, you more or less confirm that you have reported this in your manuscript. And this is what editors are looking for. You can see that in the abstract, they are asking you to submit information about study design methods and results. And all of these things relate to stuff that you have to do even before you start collecting the data, except the only thing you don't have in the beginning is the result. 
you have your design, you have your methods. So there is no excuse for saying, well, I'll wait till I have my results to write the abstract. Well, results will be only three or four lines of the abstract. Most of the abstract will be your question and your study design and your methods. So you can just write them even before you start writing, doing the study. <clears throat> in the future, even today, but in more in the future, not only will you be expected to give an abstract in writing, but you may also be expected to give a video abstract. Clinical and, trials and here's have one example. of female representation. <clears throat> this has caused growing scientific and political concern because women's health is of global importance. For example, worldwide, over 130 million babies are born each year. However, only a tiny proportion of these women participate in research studies. We conducted a study to explore the benefit arising from participation in randomized controlled trials across different interventions available to women of reproductive age. Women in trials had 25% better odds of improved health outcomes, on average, when compared to those outside trials. Our findings indicate that those who participate in research trials benefit themselves in the process. Armed with this knowledge, women themselves should be empowered to strive to participate in research. So you can see that uh, there is now a requirement more or less to prepare material in such a way that it's not just traditionally distributed by, a, by scientific platforms, but also distributed via social media and other related means. So we now move to introduction. <clears throat> In the introduction, we already said the last paragraph will contain the objective and design. The first paragraph will contain disease information about disease burden. The idea is to show the importance of the topic and you can do that by including <clears throat> information concerning disease burden as measured by prevalence or suffering or economic cost. And you can do that by looking for systematic reviews on the topic in the literature. So these are the key things that go in the first paragraph. This is not a book chapter. You only need to write six lines or eight lines, two or three lines each for prevalence, life quality, and cost of, cost of the disease. Then you need to say, why did you do the study? Well, there are only three reasons for doing a study. Well, either, either, there is no such study before. Either the existing studies are of poor quality or the existing papers are too old. In order to justify your study according to one or more of these criteria, you will need to be sure from having performed a systematic search that what you say is verifiable. It's not just your own opinion about your own work, but it can be independently checked if somebody did a search of PubMed, for example. <clears throat> okay, when you talk about quality of uh, other studies, frequently you have to criticize other papers. But, if you just give a few seconds of thought to it, the authors of other papers could also be your peer reviewers. Because people published in the same topic where you are trying to publish will be asked to peer review your paper. So you cannot just say negative things about other people's work who are in a position of power about decision making concerning your paper. Does that make sense? So I suggest the way to go about it is, I show you with an example, here is a paper, 
there is already a published systematic review on this topic. The discussion section of any paper should have something written about the limitations of that paper. So what you can do is take the previously published paper, pick up its reported limitation by the author themselves, and just put that in the second paragraph of your introduction. And you can use inverted commas and references to the original source. And this way, if the peer reviewers happen to be the author of this paper that you are wanting to criticize, they will be able to see that you have written what they wrote. So instead of being upset with you, they will be happy with you. Makes sense? Okay, so we stop here for a moment. We've covered title, abstract, and introduction. We've covered the research question. We've covered study design. And we've covered some tricks on how to write the difficult text of the second paragraph of introduction, where there is a risk that the study you need to criticize in order to justify your own study could be the study that is written by your own peer reviewer. So at this stage, let's see what questions and comments we have. Yes, if anyone wants to unmute them, I can ask a question. They can raise their hands and we'll unmute. Um, I actually have a question. This was a question. Yes, that, please go ahead. Yeah, this was a question that was asked by someone um, before the session. Um, they asked that how can they change the language of the manuscript to be more, I guess you could say, professional and suit the style of the audience? Like essentially, what is the language of the manuscript supposed to be like? What kind of style is it supposed to be like? So, well, uh, people say the best way to become a good author is to first become a good reader. So my advice is to read published papers in high ranking journals. You will then, having read a few papers, you will immediately see that these papers have a language of, uh, of science written with precision. And then you just need to, in your own writing, start to write in that way that this is this would be my advice the as I, as I was saying a moment ago <clears throat> i've read more than 10000 manuscripts as editor and i can assure you that some of the worst manuscripts that i've read have come from native english speakers So the language of science is the language of science, not the language of a country. And science is universal. So anybody who can learn the language of science can write good science. Um, they do not have to be a native speaker to be able to write a good scientific paper. I hope that addresses the, the comment